Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Today it's going to be similar to one which I did previously but I'm going to be starting from scratch so you don't need to watch that and this is going to be having a real time and real world sun in your game. So essentially what this is going to be is the sun is going to be at the correct time for the player and the correct location for the player as well. So essentially you input where the location is you want to be and this sun will update at the correct time so over the same length that the sun will be moving in real life as well. So if I hit play there's not much to show but essentially I've got this set up for London England so the sun is going to be up there for London right now at around about 20 past 2 in the afternoon on the 25th of May. So again this is where it is in London right now and obviously as time goes on this is going to update as well and the way I've set it up is so that it updates every single minute so as a minute goes by it's then going to update the sun's location to be where it should be as well. So obviously we're not really going to see much change let's say someone has played in your game for three hours because obviously that does happen sometimes the player will see and notice the sun has moved from when they joined to when they left because it's been three hours especially if let's say it's the middle of winter so this is what we're setting up today so without further ado let me delete this code and i'll show you how i've done it so similarly to the previous video the first thing we want to do is we want to enable a certain plugin which will allow us to do this so to do that we can go to edit and then plugins and then what we're going to do is just search for sun position calculator like that tick enabled and then hit the restart now button that should appear in the bottom right of your screen obviously restart your engine and now you should have that plugin enabled so to find it we can press this little folder icon next where it says content to choose a path and we're going to search for sun position content selecting the top folder there so now we have access to the bp sun position blueprint there I'm going to drag that in to the level like so as you see we have this nice little compass this is what we're going to use to change everything that we need and obviously you can see down here we have the latitude longitude time zone and all that good stuff and i am going to set those up in here but the date and time we're going to have it so it updates automatically now the reason why i'm inputting the location my manually instead of doing automatically is because i can't really find the best way of getting the player's real world location i know how to do it on mobile but I've never had the need to actually do it on PC before, so I can't really find the best way of doing that. But if somebody else knows, then obviously let me know in the comments down below, and I can either update this video or pin the comment or anything like that. But again, I can't really find the best way of doing that, so like an actual location rather than just a continent, for example, for servers. But again, let me know if you know anything. So for the moment, I'm just going to put it in. What you could maybe do is have an array of different locations, so you can have major cities, for example, an array with latitude and longitude of London, Sydney, Auckland, Shanghai, New York, LA, anywhere you want. And then maybe when the player starts playing the game, you can make them choose which city they're closest to and then just use that day and time as well if you want. That might work quite well. And obviously, if you want more in-depth explanation on that, then obviously let me know. But without further ado, that's enough talking. So what I'm going to do is set the latitude and longitude for London. So for me, that's going to be latitude of 51 and longitude of about zero. Time zone is obviously just going to be one or out. I'll put it as zero, like so. As now you can see, we have the correct positioning and latitude there, like so. However, at the moment, it's still the 1st of January at eight in the morning. So the sun is only just gonna be rising because it's the middle of winter. But we can set up the date and time to be perfect now as well. So I'm gonna double click the BP sun position blueprint to open it up here, like so. And what we're gonna do is we want to go to the update sun function that we have here. So just double click update sun to open it up like so. Then we can go to the get sun position node here and just delete the year, month, day, hours, minutes and seconds inputs which we have there in those integers. Because what we're going to do instead is we're going to right click and search for now and get the date time now like so. And what this is going to do is it's just going to simply get the time for the player's computer. So if the player does change the time on their computer it will change this time as well. So obviously if you don't want that to happen, then you can get UTC now, I believe it's called. Uh, yes, UTC now, which is going to get the coordinated universal time. And then you can obviously just add on how many hours it should be ahead or behind of that. But I'm just going to use the now node. I'm going to right click it, split the structure pin, and then simply just connect all of these in accordingly. So year, month, day, hours, minutes, and seconds. Now as you can see, we're going to get the sun position for the player's current year, month, day, hour, minute, and second. So where the sun is going to be at the exact time the player is playing the game. So we can compile and save that. 
However, at the moment, all this is going to do is fire this off when the player begins the game, so it's only going to get the time for when they start and won't update. So we want to update this every minute or every hour or every second, whichever you like, but we need to update it. So I'm going to go over to my event graph here. Uh, let me delete this code actually. Uh, sorry about that. So we're going to go to the event graph and we're going to get event begin play. So I'm going to hold down P and left click to get event begin play. And as you probably saw there, we need to just update this whenever we need to. So again, for me, I'm going to do this every minute just to keep it nice and efficient because obviously the player won't notice it otherwise. So you can do it every second if you want, but it's not going to be noticeable and this is just a bit more efficient. So again, I'm going to do it every minute. So off of event begin play, what I'm going to do is I'm going to again get that now node, right click return value and split the structure pin again. I'm going to come out of the return value second and get an integer minus an integer, connecting that into the bottom, not the top. The top value is going to be 60. So it's going to be 60 minus the seconds. Now I'm doing that because now I know how many seconds are left until the end of the current minute the player is in. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want this sun to update as the minute changes over. You obviously don't need to do that, but I'm going to do it anyway because I think that's a little bit nicer and that extra level of detail again. So now what I'm going to do is hold down D and left click to get a delay, connecting that into begin play, and the duration is going to go into the return value of that integer minus an integer. It will convert it automatically to a float, and now what's going to happen is this first delay is going to be the correct time to then fire off after the current minute has ended. So you can see here, when this changes to 232, this would fire off. I'm going to move that up a little bit, like so. Off the complete of, the, of this delay, I'm going to simply just call function update sun, the one which we already have, and then I want to do this again after a minute. So we don't need to calculate anything anymore because it will just be a minute. So I can hold down D, left click to get a delay, connecting that in there. Duration is going to be 60 because one minute, this is in seconds, so 60 seconds. And then again, this is going to go back into that update sun call function there. So what it's going to do is it's going to fire off after a minute back into the update sun function and then go back into this delay to wait for another minute, which will work perfectly for us like so. So we compile and save and this should now work perfectly for us. So if we close this, you can see the sun has updated from when we first had it to be in the correct position in the sky for London right now. So that's perfect. So what I'm going to do is I am going to hit play and as we should see, this should update after a minute. So what I'm also going to do is just have this on screen like so, so we can see it firing off when it should. So let me just get that back on screen like that. Let me put it up here and then move this over like this. Now you should see that delay has 10 seconds left and when that fires off, which you should see the little white line, you can also see in the bottom right, it will change from 1432 to 1433. As you see, they've both gone off at the same time, perfectly like so. So you can see this is in perfect sync with the real world and real world time, which is gonna be perfect for what we wanted. So this sun is updating in real world time. So it is in the correct position in the sky for London as of right now as I'm recording because that's also when I'm playing. So if I came back to this three hours later, the sun will be in a different position in the sky because it will be a different time. So again, if the player is playing the game for a couple hours, they should notice it has moved accordingly to the perfect amount of time it should be. So again, this is just a nice little feature which you might want to have in maybe an ultra realistic survival game or something along those lines or somewhere where you just want the time to be realistic to real life and to reflect that. So I think that'd be it for this video as we've done everything we've wanted to do. We've set it up so we have the sun in the sky in the correct position for the player's actual time in real life and it's going to be updating perfectly as well. And obviously you can use this now node as well here to actually print the correct time as well. So in my previous day night cycle tutorial I showed you how to have it so the time is on screen. You can obviously do that here as well. You can just bind this now into a text in a widget and it will then give the actual time on screen like so. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, to make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.